list of, thanks, Michelle. So we just started recording. Um, so I will um, go through my list of uh, attendees and, you know, um, folks change month to month. So as I call out your, um, as I call out the organization name, please um, announce your presence and your name um, so I could log you down and people could hear that you're here. Uh, if you're not able to, you could also insert this information in the chat if you're attending this meeting on your computer. All right. So um, I will start off with Advanced Health. Anyone from Advanced Health? Morning, everyone. This is Chris Hogan. Morning, everybody. It's Jim Gardner. Thanks. Hi. Um, any folks from All Care Health? Uh, yes, this is Bonnie Walker. This is Ada Connor Koash. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what about um, Care Organ? Good morning. This is Peter Hedgecock. All right, uh, Cigna. Good morning, Jason Loftus from Cigna. All right, rolling along, CVS Health, Aetna. Good morning, good afternoon here. Um, Tracy Cole, John Navickis, and Alicia DeJesus are here. Hi, thank you. Um, Health Share of Oregon. All right, what about Humana? Hi, this is Tiffany Phelps with Humana. Hello. Uh, Stephen right, Jeffrey, thanks. Humana. And Carrie Foreman. Michelle, I've added some names in the chat for you for the other participants from Humana. All right, thanks. Um, let's. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, moving on to Kaiser. Greg Daniel. Uh, and Keith Crowman, good morning. Good morning. Okay, Moda Health. All right, um, any folks uh, representing OHA Medicaid fee-for-service? Pacific Source. Hi, this is Jeanette Sims from Pacific Source, and I have Kyle Harada on the line with me. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, hey, Kyle. All right, what about Providence? Good morning, this is Drew Tower. And Kristen Downey is also here. Good morning. Okay, Regents Cambia Health. Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Jared Collings. And Vince Porter's on the phone. Right, uh, Samaritan Health. All right, uh, another reminder, use that chat box if you um, wish. Uh, next up, uh, Trillium HealthNet Centene. Julianne Duncan is on the line. Josh Marcellus. Hello. Kevin Mitby Manning. Seven, 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 seven,
questions? All right, um, Qua Help. Okay, going down. Uh, any folks from United Healthcare? Good morning. This is Anna Morales with United. Hello. Thanks, Michelle, getting from in the chat. Um, and then uh, Yam Hill. Good morning. You've got Larry Soderberg and Amanda Champagne on the phone. Hello. Um, okay, um, next up is uh, any state OHA staff. Sarah, I have you down. Other folks? Good morning, Good morning. this is Liz McCarthy. Morning, this is Asian Song. Uh, student ran is online. Hello, thank you. Um, any folks from uh, Baylet Health on the line? Yeah, this is Megan Burns from Baylet Health, and on the line with me are Jessica Marr and Grace Flaherty. All right. Um, do we have any other per, uh, participants on the line? This could be other uh, state staff, um, other industry groups, representatives from uh, legislative offices. Uh, good morning, this is Jeff Winkley from OAHHS. Hi, Jeff. Good morning, this is Richard Gibson from Comagine Health. Richard? Daniel Porter, Legacy Health. Hi, Daniel. Rebecca Owen, HCA Solutions. Hi, Rebecca. All right. Um, and I'll do another roll call roundup um, at the near the end of the meeting for people that are uh, coming in. Um, and then lastly, do we have any members of the public? All right, thanks everybody. All right, so that includes um, roll call. And if I miss you, um, please use the uh, chat and um, if you can uh, in your Zoom profile um, text field if you could put your name and your organization in uh, parentheses at the end of it that'll help people um, see where you're from. Okay so here's the agenda for today. So we just did introductions. Um, we'll do a really quick uh, meeting summary of last month. Uh, well, we have some updates for you. Uh, we just had a uh, implementation committee meeting just a few days ago, um, some updates about the rules and, and things like that. And we'll spend uh, most of our time today talking about the validation uh, steps. Um, you all should have received a uh, process document. It's in draft form and I want to give a shout out to um, our analyst Liz McCarthy for um, developing that and pulling that all together uh, for you folks. So please refer to that. Um, and if you haven't had time 
to digest it. And uh, if you have other questions, always, always uh, feel free to email us um, any of your questions using our program inbox. Um, and I think it might be on this slide. If it's not, it's uh, plastered all over our webpage. Okay. So going over the meeting summary of last month, which was actually our second tag meeting that month. It feels so long away. Um, but I wanna note the meeting summary is uh, posted on our tag meeting for today. The June 23rd meeting notes are all there. So um, please look at that. But uh, in review, uh, we talked a little bit about some of your comments and suggestions. Um, we rolled all those up into the manual and Excel template we pushed out uh, at the end of that month on June 30th. Uh, so some of those um, were comments and additions made to the behavioral health taxonomy. Um, we talked about that new tab seven um, that collects uh, reporter organization uh, affiliate pins. So that is in our uh, submission template. Um, and as you'll see later on in this meeting, it um, will play a role in the our valid our data file validation as well. Um, we talked a little bit about pharmacy rebates. Right now, we are looking. We are um, we decided not to apply rebates at the provider level. Um, and there's a section in the manual um, detailing that. And we could that was one of the topics we could revisit um, later on, but for this initial submission, um, too complicated, we're not, we're not gonna tackle that quite yet. Um, we talked a little bit about the standard deviation calculation guidance. Uh, there are, there's an example standard deviation Excel posted on the cost growth target data submitter page. Um, it's a lot to look at when you first open it up. So um, please take your time with it. Uh, we'll also uh, be going over that uh, guidance document, that supplemental guidance document in the, in the training as well. Um, uh, and then we gave a really brief intro on the validation process and we'll be talking a bit more about it today at today's meeting. Are there any questions, any additions uh, from you, Sarah or Megan? Nothing from me. Nor from me, thanks. Uh, next slide, please, Michelle. And the next one. So we're gonna roll into some updates right now and I'll hand this off to Sarah. Okay, good morning everyone or afternoon. Um, a couple of quick updates from the implementation committee, the Cost Growth Target Implementation Committee. They are currently meeting every other month and their most recent meeting was this past Monday, July 26th. The meeting recording is in the process of being posted on our website and we'll have a meeting summary out um, in a little bit. But before those are available, just wanted to highlight a couple things from Monday's agenda. Um, we have begun talking about a plan for provider organization outreach and communication. Most of the participants in this group um, are the payers because we're focusing on the data submission, but we know there's a lot of confusion out there for provider organizations, including does this apply to me? What do I have to do? Do I have to submit data? What's the difference between the cost growth target and the value-based payment targets? So we introduced a plan for provider outreach and communications and got some implementation committee feedback on that. And we'll be moving forward with that um, in August and moving into this fall. We also talked about potential analyses that will help identify some additional strategies for um, cost growth mitigation. So this will be a big focus of the implementation committee in the future, looking at data, identifying priority areas and additional opportunities to help take action to attain the cost growth target. And we proposed or introduced our planned analyses, um, most of which are claims-based analysis using our all payer claims database, not using the payer data submission files. So we introduced all of that. 
um, for implementation committee feedback. And then finally, we spent some time planning for the future version of the implementation committee. So the current iteration of the implementation committee will sunset in December. Um, that was the legislatively established committee. One of the committee's recommendations was that, that there should be an ongoing committee to provide some oversight um, and guidance when needed for the cost growth target program. So we introduced a proposed charter, proposed membership, and a proposed recruitment plan for the new committee. The plan would be to, the, the plan is to review that proposed charter with the Oregon Health Policy Board on Tuesday next week. And once we have their feedback, we will go ahead and start recruitment. We want to open that up, have a wide recruitment process for members for this new version of the implementation committee. And we hope to have them uh, hopefully identified and appointed by the end of the year so that the new committee can start up um, early next year. So we'll keep all of the tag participants um, updated as that recruitment announcement and application for the new committee is finalized and when that opens. I think that's everything from the committee meeting. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, back to you, Trang. All right, thanks, Sarah. Um, next slide, please, Michelle. Okay, um, so just a reminder, an email went out to um, our tag distribution list. We also sent this email out to uh, whoever we had as organizational contacts. There's a lot of overlap between those two groups, but um, wanting to cast a wide net. Uh, our data submission training is uh, exactly a week from today, next Wednesday, uh, 10 to 11.30 a.m. Um, so if you uh, misplace that email invite or something, just please uh, email us and we can send it out to you again. Um, forward it to uh, whoever on your team uh, needs to see it, attend it. Um, the meeting, the training will be recorded and posted on our data submission webpage as well. So the recording, the slides, um, all that, all that stuff will be on our data submission webpage as well. Um, so after that training early August, first week of August, we also have three office hours planned. Um, the times are below, we're holding them um, as Teams meetings. So those invites were sent out as well. Uh, forward them uh, to others on your side as you wish. Uh, the first one is immediately the week after the training. Um, so hopefully some of that information will still be fresh in everybody's minds. And if you um, can come to those office hours, uh, that would be great. Um, well, you know, there's no agenda for office hours. It's just basically um, OHA staff uh, attending. We'll have our documents all up on the screen in case we need to screen share. And the idea is uh, folks can uh, come join, come with any questions, and we'll just be on the line for an hour. And Trey, I would add that for people who aren't able to attend the office hours, we do intend to publish and keep refreshing our frequently asked questions document. So content from the office hours will get reflected in those documents and pushed out to everyone. Yes, that's a nice segue to the next slide. Yay, okay. So um, part of the revamp of our website includes a, a separate web page specifically for data submission. Um, on that web page, you'll see the data submission template, the manual, um, a couple supplemental guidance documents, um, and highlighted as the last bullet is the data submission facts. This is a new document we pushed out. We are going to be updating that facts document in August. Um, so, so keep an eye out for that. And as I said before, the training recording and slides will also join all those bullets as well after we hold the training. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so as mentioned before, the website will look a little different. I think the main uh, 
the main links most of most interest to folks probably of this group are the um, the the tag page. So on the left hand side, you'll see all the different uh, committees and work groups. Um, implementation in the middle, that very first link is the uh, big data submission page. Um, so look for all all your resources there. Um, oh, and I do want to make a note related to uh, data submission. Um, something new that just popped up, and I do want to make a note in this tag meeting, um, applies. So this is relevant um, for our CCO data submitters. Um, you should, I don't think they have the have done it yet, but you should um, be uh, receiving uh, communication from our Office of Actuarial and Financial Analytics, OFA. Uh, for those that, that have been around a while, this is the new name of the Actuarial Services Unit, ASU. So um, OFA is going to um, redistribute the concurrent member level CDPS risk score data files. Um, for those data years, 2018, 2019, and 2020. They'll send it to um, their CCO contacts for uh, optional use if you would like to use those risk scores um, when preparing your data submission. So, and I forwarded all of our CCO email contacts uh, to the OFA group. Um, so watch out for that um, coming shortly. Okay, um, the last update is rulemaking. Um, this was included in the meeting material. Um, uh, the track changes permanent um, rules draft. Um, and so if you'll remember when we first did the temporary temporary rules, we included uh, some language that was relevant only for this year's data submission because um, there was a different due date. We pushed it back to October 1st. There were a couple other um, things. So you'll see the removal of all those things in the draft rules. So that is uh, out there for you to review. Um, we're going to have our rules advisory committee meeting, which will uh, be, I think the, did we say the first or the last hour of our August tag? I think it's the last hour. Yeah. Um, so, and because basically you, um, all of you in attendance at these tag meetings, you guys are the uh, RAC audience. Um, and you can see if you go to the data submission web page, the rule activity timeline at the high level timeline, um, you'll see all that drafted out there. So, rules. Hey, Anything Jack, else? Can I yeah. jump in? I got a question in the chat yeah. um, about the FAQs. Okay. And wanted to confirm, we know there's been some questions about whether or not provider organizations are required to submit data and just wanted to state for everyone, for the record, provider organizations are not required to submit data for the cost growth target program. And you can find that information on page three of the FAQs. There's a section that outlines sort of responsibilities, responsibilities for the cost growth target program, including data submission and when accountability mechanisms apply. So if you need that in writing anywhere, it is on page three of the FAQs. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, which is kind of a good segue to validation. So um, let's move forward a slide, actually two slides. Uh, so as we said last month, um, validation is going to, we're going to keep it at kind of these three broad stages. Um, and just to hit home that point again, this is, validation of individual data files. So only payers are data submitters. Um, so we have, this year we have 37 data submitters um, and we will be receiving 37 files. So for each payer submitted file, this is um, 
this is what our, our validation refers to. Uh, and we have validation occurring in three stages. The first is a quick initial review of data submission. Two is where the really interesting validation steps are. And we'll go through these in um, uh, more detail in the next couple of slides. Uh, and three is communication and finalization. So this is where um, we'll officially go out, reach out to people um, to validate the data once we finish collecting it all. And at stage three, this is, um, well, I'll let the slides speak for themselves. Uh, we can we can go forward. All right. So stage one. Oh, go forward one slide. Yes. Um, so stage one, you can view. You pretty much can view and confirm you've passed stage one if you've completed the TME slides. Um, appropriately and you're not getting a uh, you know red colored cells flashing or anything like that um, stage two we're keeping all of the stage two checks uh, in-house with OHA staff right now um, and as we said before we don't know how large these files are and some of uh, the stage two validations um, if we did build it into the Excel file it might bog it down or slow it down uh, but this is definitely um, something we would like to push out in an auto-calculated tab for you all, uh, maybe for next year, next year's TME file. Um, but right now we'll go through what we're doing, what we're planning for stage two, um, and open it up to you to see, it, see if it makes sense. Uh, and then stage three is the communication validation, um, going back to uh, submitters and showing folks this is what we found. Does this make sense to you? Is it okay to move forward? Um, do or do we need a resubmission? So let's go forward a slide. Okay. So this is the same workflow diagram that's also in that validation process draft that was emailed as part of the tag meeting material. Um, the first row, you can see uh, steps 1A through 1D, those are all stage one. Um, and those uh, are kind of large uh, structural issues. Um, were, were all of the questions um, and technical comments on that page one cover page uh, answered okay? Um, and you can see here one. C uh, refers to that new tab seven, which collects those provider ID tins. Um, and so what you'll see are two uh, sort of uh, asterisks. Uh, one is after 1A, one is after 1D. Um, before we move on, we uh, really need to make sure the data uh, at a very basic level is, is filled in appropriately before we go forward. So we do want to look at that level a little more closely and we may uh, reach out to you at either of those two points. So after that's done, if all is going well, we begin stage two. Um, stage two is where we will do a lot of uh, cross checks across tabs and variables at the relevant levels, right? The relevant years, the relevant line of business and make sure um, all of the tabs are linking correctly. And if stage two um, flows okay, then we'll uh, continue down to stage three, which are kind of those uh, light green colored boxes. Um, communication with uh, data submitters, I think it's an um, it's one of the questions we want to pose to you at one of the later slides, but we we want to be as open and communicative with you as much as possible. Um, stage three is kind of the official like we're all done with validation. Um, here's what your individual data file looks like. Remember, we're not combining anything yet. Um, we just need to make sure your file is finalized. Um, does this look okay? If it's okay, great, we move forward. 
Um, and that's the, the upper track over there that ends in data accepted. Um, the lower track is, oh, okay, you found something um, that looks a little funky. Um, let's, let's check back, out, back in on this. Maybe data needs to be resubmitted. And if it needs to be resubmitted, um, then we can loop back and start at stage one with the full uh, resubmission file. Sharon, can I jump in? You wanna, yeah. Yeah, I think this graphic is probably a little overwhelming, just jumping right into all of the steps. So maybe just one quick summary. Um, as Trang said, we are trying to lay out what our process is and we're really looking for all of your feedback on um, are these the right steps? Do these make sense? How can we strengthen the validation of the payer submitted data files? So broadly speaking, stage one, looking for you know, very obvious missing data, um, things that might be wrong. Hopefully these are all things that you've checked before you submit the file to us, but we're going to check them too. Stage two is more complex analysis and we're looking for things that seem odd in the file and we'll talk more about that in a bit. And then stage three is going back and forth with you to answer any questions and understand what um, what we see in the file, any of those oddities, are they real, were they mistakes, um, and whether or not we need to look deeper at anything else. So really probably oversimplifying this, but just laying it out that we're breaking it out into these stages. We know that this is likely going to be a little bit more uh, iterative or that there's more overlap between these stages than we're outlining very cleanly, but um, we wanted to try to lay this out as as cleanly as possible for discussion today. But maybe we should see if there are any questions about just the high level overall process before we go into each of the stages in depth. Go ahead, Chang. Okay. All right. And I was just thinking, you know, thanks, Sarah. Maybe I, uh, maybe we should have uh, stuck this slide behind <laughs> the stages. <laughs> um, yeah, because it is, it is a lot to look at. Um, all right. Thanks. Uh, can you go forward a slide, Michelle? All right. So this is kind of pre-stage one. Um, this, these are um, checks you can do, and that'll ensure the stage one validation goes by for us very, very quickly. Um, so that's just a check for no invalid uh, cell value. Um, and if there's an invalid value, you'll see the cell uh, light up in red. Um, these checks are also reviewing the responses to those tables on the cover page, making sure uh, appropriate attestation is included in there too. Um, making sure, you know, the correct years of data are included in the template. Um, all the tabs and how each tab is related to each other is uh, checks out on your end. There's no tabs that are blank. I, you know, for us, I think for me too, I've been looking at this submission template for so long. I'm like, oh, seven tabs, that's fine. But um, for, for newer folks, it, it is a lot of tabs and they are kind of related to each other. Certainly certain variables are a subset of um, totals in another tab. So it, it is a lot. So um, please look at those resources and make sure that um, your folks compiling this understands how uh, all the tabs are connected and that the data makes sense, um, especially tab three and tab seven. Um, attributing members to uh, specific providers um, via whichever of the three attribution uh, methods you choose is going to be very important for how we uh, analyze the data and how we see healthcare spending um, in the state of Oregon. So um, making sure 
your tab three and uh, tab seven makes sense. All the providers in tab three are present in tab seven, even if they just have you know, uh, one pin or something. Um, this step is really important too, as we'll be combining all the different payer files um, so we can get a picture of what's happening in the state. Uh, and lastly, uh, that last check is making sure that uh, TME all is uh, the sum of your attributed members in TME prob and your unattributed members in TME unattributed. Um, so remember those, those members will have data in two separate tabs. Um, all right. Let's go to stage one. The next slide. Okay, um, so this is uh, basically kind of going through exactly the order of things we're going to um, uh, to process on our end. So you'll see at the very beginning that. Step 1A, we're looking for really large data quality issues, uh, missing years, invalid data, um, some, something uh, incorrect on the cover page. If, if any of these large data issues are detected by our staff, um, we will reach out to you um, as quickly as we can uh, to hopefully get it resolved um, and get a new file in. So, Hopefully, fingers crossed, um, uh, the stage will go very quickly. Um, stage one also includes other big checks, um, confirming the risk adjustment tool and methodology. Uh, we have certain criteria. Um, payers are allowed to choose their own risk adjustment methodology, but, but we do have certain criteria we have included in the manual. Um, and if payers have a question or if the tool available to them um, uh, doesn't quite fit in with that, we, we definitely invite you to reach out to us and um, tell us about the situation and why, um, wh why uh, your tool with your members uh, doesn't quite fit. And this is, just keep in mind, this is the first year and so there's going to be a lot of um, learning we are doing as well on our end. Um, I'm gonna see if Sam, Sam Smith, who I think is present, our actuary, has anything he wants to add to this. Yeah, hey, Trang. Um, no, I don't think I have anything to add. Yeah, we're here to reach out, uh, to be reached out to, that is, um, we're not being prescriptive, uh, precisely because we don't know what you all have access to um, and we're you know obviously trusting you to not only submit data but to apply your risk adjustment tools appropriately uh, that you have available to you and if you have any questions we're here uh, we understand that this is going to be unique to each data submitter and so we're ready to work with you and I would add that we've already heard from a couple of payers about their risk adjustment methodology and how it's being applied. So if you have questions or want to gut check on anything, please feel free to reach out. Um, steps 1C and 1D are uh, looking at um, big tab relationships. So. Uh, are all of the providers in tab three, uh, are they present in at least one row in tab seven? Um, we understand uh, the providers, the provider organization name is a free text field. So um, our analyst, Liz, we are all taking that into account when we're doing the validation check. We understand there may be typos and really small errors. Um, if we do see something, we might reach out to you to confirm that, okay, this, this organization is this organization, um, but in two different tabs, maybe uh, minor uh, typos or something funky with the name. So we'll be doing that. And then the last step for stage one is 
looking at uh, certain variables um, between TME all um, match up to the sum of those rows in TME prov, uh, the, those are attributed provider orgs and then members in TME unattributed. Oh yes, and then a uh, last thing is to make sure that one of the, our fifth tab market enrollment that captures um, members that those member months um, add up between that enrollment tab and the TME all tab. Are there, um, oh, can you go back one slide? Um, Liz and Yishan, who are on the line, um, did I did I get anything? Um, did I miss anything? Do you want to add something to stage one? Sure, this is Liz. Um, I would just like to emphasize that there are potential points of communication for stage one. If there is something that really will stop us from you know, making a lot of sense of stage two, like you have data that just doesn't add up, uh, the relationships between your prov and your unattributed data, you know, are kind of wonky. Um, these are what'll kind of stop uh, and we will communicate with you to figure out what's going on. It could just be that everything's okay, um, but these are, we just wanted to include these potential communication points with you um, so that we were getting as much information as we needed to do the validation for you guys. All right, thanks. Um, uh, are there any data submitters that have um, any questions right now for related to stage one checks? Does this all make sense to you? Yes. This is Jared, I'll make sense, no questions. Thanks, Tracy, thanks, Jared. Okay, let's go on to stage hey, two. Sorry, oh. can we hang on on stage one for a second? Um, yeah. I'm wondering if any of the payers who've submitted cost growth target data in other states have any mm. experience or have done something similar to what our proposed stage one is and could share. Maybe not, but I'd also ask Megan and the Baylet team to weigh in if they have any experience from other states and early stages of validation. Sure, I would just, um, I guess I would just say that uh, when the data are submitted to OHIC, that um, it get a second eye um, before it goes in. We have found that um, on occasion, the data that are provided to states um, is provided by, um, you know, very detail oriented data analysts, um, but that someone who's got sort of more experience with the forest view um, of what should be happening with cost growth um, uh, didn't get a chance to look at it before it was submitted and turns out there might have been an error in code that is producing a result that doesn't sort of make intuitive sense. And so my suggestion would be to also have someone that has that knowledge of your business and um, of what you expect year to year growth to be to give it one last eyeball before it, uh, it gets shipped off to OHIC. Right, thanks. Can I ask one question on uh, TME3, I believe it is. Um, there is the um, column to add uh, a specific provider first name, last name. Um, and there's also the organization column. Can I ask for clarification on if we only need to provide like the, at an organization level or do you really want John Smith has five members? We want the organization level, whatever uh whatever provider organization you that's the terminal organization 
the member is attributed to, that's what we want. I think the uh, first and last name field, um, they're allowable blanks, right, Yishan? And I think we just added them in in case the the business was the name. Uh, yes, and this is Yishan. Yeah, so the uh, first and last name just as just the optional fields, uh, for example, if an organization, they just have one provider, which maybe not the case, but that's the option. But we really want the organization name being filled. Okay, sounds in good. Just that I, okay, sounds good. Thank you. Just thought I'd double check when I saw those columns. Sure. Good question. Any others? If not, we could move to stage two. Um, so in stage two, uh, our more in-depth analyses, so we're really gonna be, um, the first couple steps of stage two are really looking at those um, tabs two, three, and four, um, the TME all, which is everybody, um, members attributed to a provider organization and then unattributed members. Um, and essentially three and four should equal two. Uh, you'll love the way I'm gonna outline this in the submitter training. Okay, anyways, so in 2A, um, those will be so, and the, we're all, we're going to share the results of these with um, all of you when we reach out in stage three. Um, Liz is preparing some uh, nice summary tables to outline um, sort of what uh, by line of business, by year, um, what the trend is. Does it make sense? Um, are there any outliers or um, just any odd inconsistencies or, or patterns in the data? Um, and in stage two, it's, it's just looking at the TME all tab. Um, in stage two B, uh, we'll be digging into uh, members that are attributed. So these are uh, spending, their spending data and the provider organizations they're attributed to in the TME prov tab. Um, the TME unattributed tab is member spending data that is not able, you are not able to attribute it to an organization. So they are reported in aggregate here. Um, both of those tabs uh, will look at the data and look at uh, changes year to year, um, by line of business, uh, find any outliers, any inconsistencies um, with that. And, so again, this is looking at by year and by line of business. Um, and we'll look at all those um, different um, categories we have in there. And can we, uh, Trang, sorry, can we pause here for a second? Um, we've said outliers a couple yeah. of times and I think it might be helpful to talk about what we mean. Um, and I think we wanna be clear with everyone that we are not mm. setting thresholds. We're not saying anything is definitively an outlier. So this is going to be fairly subjective eyeballing check. So if we see PM, PM trends that just don't seem believable based on what we sort of know about the market, or if one line of business is significantly different than another, um, we're looking for things that look odd. There's not a rigid definition that we're planning on using about what an outlier is. So what an outlier is for one payer might not be an outlier for another, and we won't know that until we flag it and have that conversation. So I wanted to be a little bit more transparent about what, we're, what we mean here. And uh, team, Megan, if you have anything to add, that might be helpful. I would just say this is really about opening up conversations to make sure that everyone understands the data um, more so than anything else. Yeah, it yeah. might be that things like have great reasons for them and everything is completely accurate. And I think to Megan's point earlier about having someone who sees the forest looking at things before submission will really help. And you might be catching some of these things on your end before you even submit.
good point. Um, Yishan, did I see your audio flash? No. Um, yes, there are no uh, hard thresholds or anything at this stage. This is just us uh, summarizing um, your data. Um, and and this is all, these are all uh, topics that um, we could discuss in the stage three conversations as well. Um, and we, we do realize, you know, 2020 data is going to be um, uh, a little different. So all of that will be taken into consideration. So 2D, um, looking at pharmacy rebate. So in that tab, we have a uh, year, we have um, line of business. Uh, we'll be doing a look at this data and we'll also be looking at um, that uh, particular retail pharmacy data from PME all um, all of these uh, summary tables and things we find they're going to we'll show you that when we contact um, folks in stage three um, Liz Yishan do you want to add anything to stage two Okay, so this is Liz. I think, um, I know Megan and Sarah kind of uh, really put a focus on this, that these checks are primarily subjective. They're going to differ from, you know, payer to payer, to submission to submission. And this is just trying to make sure that the data makes logical sense um, based on that payer's, you know, certain situation. Um, all of these checks will be done kind of all at once. And then um, we will discuss all of those if we find any potential issues or something that brought our attention um, during that stage three session. Uh, hi, this is Yishan. Uh, I don't have anything to add. Uh, this thing address everything. Mm -hmm. um, any feedback from uh, uh, data reporters, data submitters right now. Does this make sense? Um, and as we go through this process with you all for the first time this year, if there's a, something you feel really strongly like, yes, I would love an auto-calculated summary table uh, built in into the Excel for next year, um, please tell us that. Too, and we'll try to make it work. Um, but does this make sense right now? Hi, this is Tracy Cole from CBS. This makes sense. It's similar to what we've seen for other states as well. This is Bonnie Walker from All Care Health. And this does make sense. I am waiting for the training to, to help that inform this process. All right. Let's go to the next slide. All right, uh, so in stage three, we crunch the numbers for stage two. We look at how the um, data summarizes. Uh, we will start conversations with submitters, um, showing you those results. Um, we'll ask you uh, if, if it makes sense, does it look funny, um, or we, we send the file downstream for analysis. We need to check every um, individual file. Uh, so based on those uh, conversations, um, if we detect something that may be funny, but it's actually real, it's what, it's what the data looks like, then that's fine. And then we can go ahead with the file. Um, if something is a bit off and it turns out oh, I think we do need to recrunch some stuff on our side 
and compile a new file. Um, we will definitely do that. Um, and if we go down that route, we will document things on um, this resubmission, this data resubmission form, um, and that will just serve as documentation, uh, not just for us, but for you as well. Um, in case we need to refer back to it for next year, um, if the same um, issue applies. And uh, I guess another thing to note, if, re, if we need to do a resubmission, um, the resubmission uh, should be for the whole file. So even if there's like, um, oh, there was something wrong in the way we crunched the numbers for uh, these members or this particular line of business, um, we'll need to do the whole file um, again. So that uh, starts us back at validation stage one. Um, hopefully that resubmission will go um, fairly quickly once we, once we um, hammer out uh, what the quirk was that needed to be fixed. And after, so after stage three, if everything is fine and good, the data file is correct. Um, that provider tab seven, tab three uh, matches up okay. Um, that will be very important for uh, our downstream work because we will need to stitch together all the payer files um, into a large statewide file. Anything to add from, from Liz, Yishan, or Sarah? Or Megan, anybody on the team? Hey, Trang, this is Liz again. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to emphasize that the communications with the submitters will kind of start it out with an email. Um, it'll explain any potential issues that we've identified as well as some outputs that are relevant um, from the validation you know, steps prior. And we want to make sure that they have time to digest all that information before we have like a one-on-one -on -one meeting with that you know, submitter. Um, this stage is really going to be an open communication between OHA and the data submitters, just to make sure that you know we are understanding the data, that the data was you know aggregated appropriately, that everyone's on the same page, and that any wonkiness of the data can either be explained or, if need be, needs to be resubmitted. So when we say that, the, you know, you may be asked to be resubmitted. Not everyone. Hopefully not everyone will have to resubmit, so. Hopefully no one will have to resubmit. That would be wonderful <laughs> for everyone. I also wanna yeah. add here that I think there's some fuzziness. And again, we're presenting this as a process with some very clean stages that might not reflect total reality. So in this stage three, especially as we're looking at any you know, wonky numbers or any questions that we have, some of the answers to that question to those questions or some of the content that you all might be pulling together to explain what is happening in your data, that might actually start to carry over into those reasonable reasons or good reasons for cost growth. So it may be that something looks like an outlier, but there was actually a major change in under one of those good reasons. And so that's something we'll, that might surface in these stage three conversations. We'll note that and that'll follow through to the accountability conversation. So I just wanna recognize that I, we know that this is not as clean as we are presenting it here, but our focus is on making sure that data files are ready and that we're all very confident in the, in the data files before we move into performance measurement and accountability. But certainly some of the conversation will overlap. Uh, Sarah, this is Vince at uh, Regents. And I had a quick question. And I, I apologize if you've said this and I've because I've been jumping off on a call from a minute or two. But um, I, th this is all extremely helpful, I think, for us to grasp how you guys are thinking through the process. Um, what about have you thought through timelines on how what the expected state stages are? I know that too will probably be fuzzy, but um, I'm just curious your thoughts on timelines. Yeah, I think we don't know because we're hoping we don't know what the data are going to look like this first time. Um, so 
I'm hesitant to commit us to anything. I think we're hoping stage one will be fairly quick. There are then we have a fixed number of files coming in. We know exactly what we're looking for and we can tag those things. I don't know how long that will actually take in reality. Um, stage two, that is code that our team will be running. And so it'll sort of process all together, but then actually seeing the output of that code, manually reviewing it, deciding what the questions are, reaching out to each payer individually. Um, I really don't know. Megan, maybe you have an example from another state about how long some of this takes. I mean, I think in some cases, this could be within a couple of days of the due date. And in other cases, it might be a couple of weeks out before we're ready for some of these conversations. Um, maybe even longer. I think some of this is going to be iterative and there might be multiple rounds, but I, I just don't think we're ready to commit to a solid timeline. I think that's fair, Sarah. And um, I think there should be an expectation that both um, OHA will be learning as well as payers that haven't participated in this process and other states will be learning. Um, and so uh, both of those may require a little bit more time uh, for understanding the data as well as the potential for um, you know, resubmitting uh, data using you know, different code or correcting any issues that may come up. And I will say that by the time we get to OHA requires resubmission in the process, there will be an actual timeline then for that resubmission. There will be a set time period for when that resubmission is due, but everything sort of in between there is mushy. Okay, thanks for the answer. And, um, you know, I can tell you just on internal meetings, um, it's gonna, yeah, as a new reporter on a process like this, this is definitely, you know, new questions arrive every time we talk about it. So, um, you know, looking forward to collaborating with you guys on it. Thanks. And, you know, honestly, in the, to Megan's comment about the spirit of shared learning and we're all figuring this first process out, I think if there are questions that you or conversations that you all have internally, and you think those are things that would be good validation checks, either things that should be recommended that all payers do before they submit or things that OHA should be looking for across all of the submissions. I think we're very open to feedback and the things that we include in these in the validation process next year might look a little different based on these conversations. I'm muted. Yes, definitely, Sarah. Big underline. Um, if you find something, if you see something on your end that uh, really makes sense to to have as a recommendation, uh, a validation check for for data submitters, definitely let us know. Because it is possible we haven't thought of everything. <laughs> And um, Sarah and Trang, I, I'm going to hopefully um, not speak out of turn for you guys, but I think you're also open to questions about the specifications themselves, not just on a validation process, but what, what certain definitions mean or how, for example, the code that a payer needs to write in order to gather the right definition can, you know, how that can be interpreted. I, um, I know that you're open to that too. 100%. We've had such fantastic involvement from you all in the tag in developing the initial template and specifications. And we absolutely are going into this initial data submission with the expectation that things will shift. Some of that might surface during office hours over the next couple of months as, the, we, as, as you prepare the initial data submission and we might push out more clarification. Some of it might be more changes for next year. Um, but yes, all of that is definitely on the table for feedback. Hey, this is Jeff Winkley from the Hospital Association. Um, question I have is how does this validation process kind of weave into that provider outreach plan um, that was mentioned that was in the works by the implementation committee or, or other provider involvement? It, it seems like that that is uh, my read. It's looking like the provider involvement would come after the, uh, of the you have a finished product. Um, I don't know if I'm wrong on that, but if you can explain that a little bit more, that'd be great. Yeah, Jeff, can I actually use that as a segue to go to the next slide? Um, yeah. I'm just gonna weave that together. So 
we plan on communicating with the data submitters throughout this process as Liz and Yishan and Chang have all shared. We might reach out throughout the process. There might be multiple conversations that happen. Um, again, this is all communication specific to the validation. After the data are sort of done, validated, then we move into the calculation of performance relative to the cost growth target, applying the statistical testing, merging all of the data to create the provider analysis, looking at the provider performance, and then having those conversations about what it all means, what, what's happening, was this a good reason for the cost growth or not. Um, that is, again, not clean, but a separate process. And so for provider organizations, we do think that there, we don't, we don't think, we know that there is a need to coordinate and communicate with provider organizations about what their performance is, what it means, is it accurate? We know that there are concerns and certainly we've heard that this has been an experience in other states that once the cost growth target data is combined and a provider organization sees their results, it might not match with other reporting that they've been getting. And so how do you reconcile that? That is a whole separate process. We know that we need to spend some time with you all and definitely with providers as part of that provider organization outreach, figuring out what that process looks like. We're postponing that slightly, um, or not postponing, we're, we're staging the build out of this because one, we're focusing on the payer data submission first because that's the foundation for all the rest of it. We need the, pay to the payer data files to be solid, to have confidence in those before we can do anything with them, which includes creating the provider level performance. We do wanna talk about what that means, but we're also a little complicated by, I think, as you all know, we have a really broad scope and the provider organizations that could be included, it's a much longer list than the 37 data files that we expect from the payer data submission this year. So I think we'll need to do some more thinking about who actually even are the providers. And on Monday at the implementation committee meeting, we talked about our provider outreach and breaking that into phase one providers and phase two providers um, based on sort of likeliness of the cost growth target uh, inclusion. So I think, Jeff, I don't know if I'm really answering your question. I don't think we intend to build validation into the provider organization outreach, but we can definitely talk about what the plans are, what this might look like for providers when we get to that stage, but it is further down the road. Oh, no, that's great. That helps clarify things. Uh, thank you for that. And so um, what you're saying totally makes sense. We'll just look for what is coming out of the of the outreach plans coming down the coming down the pike. Yeah, we want provider organizations to know about the cost growth target and to know this is coming and to set the expectation that there will be conversations with provider organizations as well. But what the process is for those conversations, what the validation looks like and what the involvement of payers looks like because in many cases those might need to be three-way conversations oha the provider and the payer or multiple payers depending on who we're talking about and which line of business and which contracting arrangement so it's a little it's a it's a lot more complicated and we want to be thoughtful in how we get to that stage um, but we need to have very solid data before we roll any of that out definitely agree Appreciate that, Sarah, thanks. Thanks, Jeff. And I think just like all of this, if you or others have feedback about the provider organization conversation, we'll be thinking about that in the next couple months and where we welcome your feedback on how we can best do that. All right. Great. Any other uh, comments on communication? Okay. Well, let's go to the next slide. There's some discussion questions, some last discussion questions there. Um, so I know we sort of opened it up for uh, people to share their thoughts after after each stage. But now that you've gotten the whole picture and you, you've had that great uh, summary um, and status report from Sarah about what our plans are for um, outreach, validation with payers and also outreach to provider organizations. Um, first, for the data validation, are there any concerns with the, with the proposed process 
right now after after seeing all those three stages are there any extra um steps that need more clarity think from folks that did speak up after um each stage we went through they they noted it was it looked pretty good par for the course for um submitters that have been submitting uh these data in other states uh is there anything else we could be anything else we could do to help um ensure additional confidence in this data um Keep in mind, maybe next year we'll try to we'll try to put some of those um, stage two um, auto calculated tables in in the template, so you'll see those results right away. So this is Jared Collings from Cambia. I, I had one comment um, on this. I think the process all makes sense the way you've, you've described it. In, in thinking about ensuring additional confidence, one thing that I think would be helpful is if there well, I'll just say it's it's along the lines of comparability, right? Of across different data submissions, you know, if if a claim categorization is really different from the majority of the other carriers, I think I'd appreciate feedback that along the lines of, hey, this category looks much different from the way everyone else is submitting, and have the chance to relook at um, the logic and how claims are being split, or maybe. Uh, that would provide a chance to ask additional questions just to ensure that before reporting or before any sort of uh, official communication happens that, that we have that opportunity to revisit data if it appears uh, very different from sort of the consensus of how most carriers are submitting. Does, does that make sense? That does make sense, Jared. And I think we probably want to talk more as a team and maybe with a couple of you about what that might mean to direct compare to payers. We've been really careful that we've trying to be really careful that our comparison is for each payer, each line of business year over year against itself, but rather than one payer against another. But I think from a validation perspective, what you're saying makes a ton of sense. And we've been kicking around some ideas about can we run some of these claims categories um, service categories in our all payer claims database and have that as a checkpoint or that we can reference each payer's data submission against as the average. And I think that's what you might be getting at um, conceptually, even if it's not the direct payer to payer comparison. Yeah, and and I think you could extend it to be, you, you know, if the comparisons are all within a carrier year over year, that, that lessens, I, I guess, my concern. But sort of any any direct communication, especially because this is the first time, it would be really helpful to, to see where we're out of line and just have a chance to revisit that. Um, so what, whatever, and it, it sounds like that's covered for the most part through, through what you've already explained. And if things pop up, I, I guess it, since it's new, it's hard to, hard to comment too much, but appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, I'd love to hear from some other payers what you think about having that Sort of would you also like to know if what you're submitting does not seem in line with a claims category from another payer for the same line of business um, how does how does that feel to you uh, this is tracy cole from cbs we did see that with one of the other states not a specific carrier to carrier but um and i think ours compared to an average of other carriers i think was what they had provided for us to go up against And that was helpful. Yes. Was that provided before the submission or was that provided as part no. of the combination? It was part of the validation. Thank you. Hi, this is Anna from United. Um, I think actually the state of Massachusetts is still in the sense that out um, in terms of our results after validation. So that we, we found that to be really helpful. This is Drew from Providence. I, I can't, I can only see it being helpful, not, not problematic.
Great. We'll think some more about how to incorporate that. I think the the tension here is going to be um, providing it in a where it can be most helpful. I think we can definitely provide it after the fact once everything is in and then that maybe is reference for future years of submission, but whether or not it helps um, flag anything in the code, you know, as part of the initial submission. I don't know if we can pull that off, but we'll talk about it some more. Um, I guess my my thinking, yeah. this is Jared again, Sarah, is that it, it would be post submission as kind of a validation. But if something was, you know, and if, if we were to submit data and for some reason our one of our claim categories was 30 percent higher or lower compared to the average, I think we would want the chance to relook at that and potentially resubmit if we find something that says, oh, yeah, we missed this bucket of claims before like official reporting goes out. I don't, I don't know if that would work in the timeline, but that's kind of what I was thinking. So maybe what you're saying is in that stage three, sit down with a, com have a conversation about what we see in your data. You're almost saying like a report card of, for these categories, we're gonna flag three categories in which you were significantly higher than the state average. And or, then or just a report that says, here's the state average, here's where you fall in as, as sort of a, and you could flag ones that are far off if, if needed. But I think that type of validation would be really helpful for re-looking at, oh, do we need to adjust our logic? Okay, that is really helpful. I think we'll think about how we can work that into the stage three. I want to caution that, um, <laughs> I want to caution a couple of things. One, that average might be subject to change because if everyone's validating their data, the average might not be accurate. Um, so I, I want to be careful that we don't put too much stake into this comparison. And two, I, uh, I don't know how to say this, but I want to be careful that we're not opening this up to, oh, we think something looks weird. We think our numbers could look better. We're going to go back and iterate until we like the results. I, and I say that like more accusingly than I mean, but I want to be careful that we still have a very uh, not open-ended validation process where you can look at the average and say, we're going to go back and poke at our data for another three months and then resubmit. Because I don't think that's our intent. Our intent is to flag issues and concerns. But again, that this might be a gray area. Did that, did that make sense? <laughs> That, that makes sense. I, I think from from carrier perspective, I would just be looking to make sure that, you know, the way we're interpreting the requirements and bucketing the claims is consistent. And, yes. and just anything that moves towards consistency, I think would be helpful for the, the goal of this program. Absolutely. Thanks, Jared. Megan, were you going to say something? Um, I was just going to say that um, uh, if um, payers are so open, one thing that uh, we have found helpful is um, rather than sort of looking at those averages um, that Jared was talking about, is actually um, digging into the code level detail and having an analyst walk through someone walk through somebody at OHA how the the logic was put together for particular service categories or something like that. Um, as sort of a way to say, yeah, this is the data that we're submitting. And of course, then it may open up some other questions about why there might be a funky result, but um, it's helpful to see that underlying code. And so in some cases we've done that and it's identified errors or identified, yep, this is, this is you know, whatever the result is, is what it is. Um, and that can, that can be a, a nice way of, of validating the information as well. And to build on that, I think I would be very willing to make some space, um, maybe in a tag, the August or September tag agenda, although September might be cutting a little close, or in one of the office hours, if any of the payers want to walk through your code and talk to each other about how you're grouping some of these categories or how you're structuring things um, so that you can move towards consistency sort of pre-submission, I think we could definitely make some space for that if anyone would be interested in doing that together.
from from my perspective, it's all about timing, right? I, I don't know how far down the road there's a lot of work to to get it going and get it organized and get the code set up and I'm, I'm not sure when we'll have that ready but but once it would be ready happy to provide some detail or, or participate in something like that and if there are specific questions um this is something we've done with other groups i think maybe with the APAC group with the metrics groups. I mean, I think if you have questions for each other, I think we can help facilitate that over email. If any of you would like to sort of pick each other's brain and say, here's how we're structuring things. Can anyone confirm or is this how you did that? Um, I think we can probably support some of that in between meetings if you want to just email us um, and we can help coordinate that if that's helpful. That's a great idea. So please let us know if that would be something you're interested in. Um, and lastly, uh, just want to touch on our last bullet point here. Um, as we're going through this uh, for the first time, we wanted to see what people thought about um, uh, like a, a status report type communication from us to you uh, monthly, bi-weekly, um, would that be helpful? Or right now, um, if we if we do not contact payers um, at those two points in stage one, uh, you can assume the validation process is going okay and we will reach out to you at the start of stage three. Um, but you know, the timeline, as we said, uh, is a little fuzzy as we do this for the first time. Um, and would folks like it uh, if we pushed out a status report and what frequency would? And let like me that? add that I think there are a couple of ways this status report could look. We know that there are a fixed number of expected data files. We could just say an aggregate of the 37 files, 35 were submitted on time, 30 of them have cleared stage one. Or we could actually say by name where everyone is so you could maybe connect if you're comfortable with that level of transparency. I think we could also talk about whether or not this is public facing or if this is internal facing just for you all as data submitters. This is Drew from Prov. Can, can we make it internal facing for this first, you know, initially? Um, if we run into problems in the submission phase, I don't want that to result in a swirl later on yeah we could definitely keep it internal for the tag i think that's for the data submitters i think that's totally fair if that is the case would you want that to be identified or in aggregate i don't really have a preference And I, this is Jared, I, I agree with Drew's recommendation to have it not public and then don't, don't really have a preference. I, it may depend on what's on the status report, but I, I think it would be helpful to kind of work through what this looks like during the initial submission. Okay, we can iterate on this a little bit. I think this, this might also... Go ahead. Go ahead. This is Bonnie from All Care, and uh, I agree. Uh, we should keep it internally. And I personally don't have a preference. Thank you. Okay. Same here from CVS Health. Great. And I'm thinking that given the earlier question, I think Jared's question about the timing, I'm thinking more frequent would be more helpful, especially if it's internal. This is Bonnie yeah, from Altair. I agree with that as well. Okay, we'll do some more thinking on that. Thank you for the feedback.
All right, um, next slide. Thanks for all those helpful comments. Um, oh, and our next slide is our last slide, actually. Um, so our August tag is uh, at the end of August. Um, we'll also repurpose some of that for um, the Rules Advisory Committee uh, meeting with you all to go over the, the permanent draft rules. Um, and I didn't, we didn't stick it here at the end of this meeting, but um, you could refer to some of the earlier slides. Don't forget that uh, data submitter training is next Wednesday, same time, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Pacific time. Um, so I hope uh, we hope to see a bunch of you all there. And uh, that's that's all I got. Do you want to add any last thoughts, Sarah? I want to flag that a couple of people are asking some more technical questions on the chat. Thank you for those questions. Um, if you can please email those so we don't lose them. If I didn't respond to you directly in the chat, that would be super helpful. Um, some of these things are related to the data submission and likely need to be updated in the FAQ. So thank you for bringing them up. Um, but I'd prefer that we not, uh, not jump into them today, like in the tag meeting today. This is Ada from All Care. Will there be a meeting or opportunity with a group to talk about some of these questions that are coming up? Because, I mean, it'd be great to work some of these out individually, but if we all have similar questions, I don't know where that puts us as a group. Yeah, I think some, Ada, and I'm sorry, some of the questions I think you're asking, there, some of them might have been answered, and I just want to make sure it's not a miscommunication. But I think we're hoping that the three okay. hour sessions will be the place for some group discussion. It's been my experience that um, office hours can be really helpful to call and listen into, even if you don't necessarily have questions because you want to hear what other people are asking and that might spark some more thoughts on your end. Are you planning on having like a question and answer, you know, sheet that you would provide that would give some of the answers to these? There is a new FAQ document that is on our webpage that has a lot of questions already answered that have come in over email in the last month or so. And we will be updating that document. All right. Well, thanks for another very engaging tag meeting. Um, oh, and now I will open it up for, I don't, I don't think we have any members of the public, but um, are there any public comments? Hearing none. Uh, thank you for all your time at this month's TAG meeting. Um, again, please, please email our uh, program email if you have any questions or additional comments. Uh, and don't forget that submitter training is next Wednesday and we have the three office hours in August and September. All right. Sarah just uh, added the email into the chat box. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.